the rabbi's father, Rabbi Shleiman Zagwi, and I are good friends from way back in yeshiva. I think Shleiman, I was here probably 25 years ago, the last time I was here. I don't know if you remember. I was at your old shul, I guess. Wow. And uh, a Fabrengen. A Fabrengen is what I call an informal Hasidic therapy session. <laughs> Very good. Now, I don't know if Dr. Creighton agrees, but a Fabrengen is really... It's a time when you allow yourself to go inside and to be open with your feelings. Now, frankly, you know, for most people, it takes a little l'chaim, okay, or more than a little l'chaim. But that's not where it's at. Where it's at is, I want to open up my heart. I want to talk from my heart. We talk mostly from here, from here. If we're talking normally at all, it's from here. You ever talk from your heart? And I don't mean, you know, oh, I love you and I care for you. Yeah, that's also from the heart. I'm talking about when you have an argument. When you have an argument with your spouse, do you talk from your heart? Hmm. And it gets hard, right? <laughs> Just this morning, I parked outside of um, JFK. My wife didn't want me parked there because it's a private street. So I said, let me ask if parking is allowed and there's no alternate street parking. I said, it is. And I'm coming back tomorrow. So what's the big deal? No. Argument. <laughs> disagreement. How do you deal with it? There's not, nothing. I'm not ashamed of it because I think, not I think, we need to embrace these discussions. <laughs> let me ask you a question. Who the last word in, that <laughs> in, in, in this case, I got because I had the keys to the car. <laughs> Although she almost didn't go into the Uber, because from there we had to take an Uber to, to the terminal. But anyway, listen to this. You have two people. Okay, I'm going to tell you something that Shleiman and I, I'm sure Shleiman had the same experience. We used to go out to Manhattan, 5th Avenue, 6th Avenue, 47th Street, 50th Street, and ask people, would you like to put on film? You know, you heard the Chabadniks do that? Right? Well, Shleiman and I did the same thing when we were kids, when we were teenagers. Okay? And, and uh, I had two different types of responses. It's Midtown Manhattan. You know what that is, right? <laughs> yeah. Thousands of people. They're in the street. It's lunchtime. I'm a life. They're running. They're here. They're, 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 they're business meeting, the park, the office, and it's happening. Would you like to put on two of them? <laughs> one, one guy looks at me and he says, have a nice day. <laughs> have a nice day. And he goes, he goes right and he goes further. Okay? I stop someone else. Two of them the, the, the phylacteries that the Jewish boys from the age of 13 put on every day except the Shabbos and holidays. Anyway, I stop someone else. Sir, how are you? Fine. Would you like to put on film? And he says, that's archaic. Oh. That's stupid. That's antiquated. That's ridiculous. Get a life. And here's my question to you. Which of these two people is closer to God? The one that tells me to have a nice day or the one who looks at me, smiles, and doesn't say a word and just continues walking? Who is closer to Judaism? Which of these two people? Sorry, go ahead. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Right. Wrong. Oh, Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Have a nice day has apathy. Ha apathy. He, you don't exist in his eyes. I don't exist in his eyes. He doesn't even have the decency to argue with me. He's too busy running and... The other one, something's bothering him. You know? 
we Jews, we look for a good fight. <laughs> and if you're not, you don't have a good fight, you're not in the ball, you're not in the, in the, in the ring. I love a good fight. You go ahead, tell me why it's archaic. And when you start talking, and when you start arguing, and when you start hugging, and you start fabrenging, and that's what a fabrenging is. A fabrenging is when you get involved, and you argue it out, and you cry it out, and you laugh it out, and you sing it out. It's energy, energy. Apathy, in Yiddish the word is kaltkeit, kaltkeit, or another Yiddish word farfrorenkeit, frozen, farfroren. The man is, the woman is frozen, they don't care. They're so far that they don't care, they're in their own world. Someone when something bothers them, and it doesn't feel right, so they're always coming back to it. And why? Why do my parents do this? And why do my kids do this? And why did my employer do this? In other words, you can't sit still. It's spilkes. Spil yeah, but the spilkes are good spilkes. These are spilkes that motivate you. They get you to move. And this is what a fabrengen is. Fantastic. This is what a fabrengen is. And naturally it takes time. It doesn't happen, you know, from an hour. We used to fabrengi yeshiva for four, five, six hours. Wow. Hours. Sitting together. And guess what? Some guys used to give it to me. They rubbed it in heavy. They rubbed it in. And I was waiting for it. <laughs> I was waiting for a week to get the zets. <laughs> right? It's like once I went over to one of my rabbis in yeshiva... And I said, I have this pride and this ego. I can't get rid of it. It's, it drives me nuts, but I have it. And I was a very good student. And then, uh, you know, I thought I was the top of the game. And I wasn't the top of the game. Not I thought I was. Right? But I walk around with this inside pride and ego. So I go to my teacher, my mashpia, my spiritual mentor. And I say, give me advice. So he says, find yourself one guy, one student in the yeshiva who's going to give you Musser. <laughs> musser means he's going to blow you out, curse you out, scold you, and tell you, you think you're so great, your character is, is shoddy. You know, with all your learning and all your knowledge, you know, you need improvement here and there. So don't find yourself someone who's going to give you a pat in the back and say, hey, J hey Jack, hey, J hey, 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 Carol, oh, you're the best. You're the best. I had a guy like that in Brooklyn. He was says, Rabbi, you're the best. I don't want to hear Rabbi, you're the best. I don't need you to tell me, Rabbi, I'm the best. You know it already. <laughs> I know it already, and I want to know how I can become better. There you go. <laughs> how can I become better? The true fish lima, as I get older, I realize I am not the best. And I've learned over my years, 30, 40 years in this field, that I truly know now I am not the best. Really, I'm not the best. And you know how I learned that from people like yourselves? Not from Shleib and rabbis. I didn't learn it from rabbis. I learned it from people like yourselves, congregants, uh, supporters, friends. Because they didn't come from where I came from. They didn't go to yeshiva. And I would sit and learn with them and talk to them, and they had much to teach me. And I said, you know, they're right. And it's still a, it's still a work in progress. It's still a work in progress. Until one returns their soul to God Almighty, it's a work in progress. But that's what a fabrengen is. So what Label said, tell them what a fabrengen is, that's what a fabrengen is. Very good. L'chaim, l'chaim. Now, have you, how about...